In this lesson, we're going to create a solid body from the sketch that we've already made. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in. And at this point, we've covered some of the basics in Fusion 360. We've learned about the user interface. We've learned about some of the basics of sketching. And now we want to turn what we've done into a solid body. As I mentioned, this is a basic series. We're learning from the ground up some of the foundational concepts that we need to know to not only work with Fusion 360, but build a strong model. And when I say strong model, what I really am talking about is something that is fully defined and it's not going to basically move around or change or shift. It's going to be exactly what you want. That's the basis of what's called parametric modeling. It's going to be models that are controlled by dimensions and constraints and that update in a way that makes sense and that you understand. So as we begin to make our solid bodies from this basic design, what we really want to do is we want to identify the dimensions that we need. Now, in most cases, you have an idea of what you're starting with or what you're building. Right now, we're sort of just freestyling. We, we're not really looking at an end goal. We're just looking at learning the tools. And that's also a fun part of it because you have a lot of flexibility. You can change things without really having to fit to certain design criteria. As we get further along and we begin to make an actual part, what we're going to do is we're going to start again at a sketch. We're going to build uh, probably a, a linkage or uh, some sort of mechanical piece that we can then simulate and machine. And then we're going to basically reapply what we've done. As I mentioned early on, I'm not a big fan of just having you follow along. Point here, click here, do this. Because I feel like you don't really internalize the data. You don't really understand how to apply what you've learned. You've made something, but at the end of the day, you can't replicate it. So again, there's going to be a lot of repetition in these basic series until we get to a foundational point where I feel like it makes sense. So now that we have this sketch, we're going to go to our Create menu. Now keep in mind that we have Solid, Surface, and Sheet Metal tools. Now any of these three menus, these options will work and will create solid geometry. We're not at the point where we can talk about sheet metal yet. It's just a little bit too complicated of a topic. Surfacing is going to create something that has no thickness. This is going to be basically a face representation. Now, there's a place and there's a time for surfacing, and we're not there yet either. What we really want to focus on is solid creation. And as we get further along, I am actually going to talk about creating forms, which are subdivided bodies. And that's a lot of fun. That's how you can create very organic shapes very quickly and easily. But again, we're not quite there yet. Now we will get there, don't worry. We will manage to, to explore all of these topics, but we really wanna focus on, again, the foundation. So let's take a look at the Create dropdown. And just like I mentioned before, there are shortcut keys for a lot of these things. We can use a right-click menu. When you make a selection on the screen, it will show you things that you can do with your selection. So from this dropdown, we have extrude. Extrude is also on the top of this menu on the ribbon, and you can use E on the keyboard. There are other things that we could do with this. We could revolve it. Uh, if we had a bit more geometry, if we had another sketch, we could use it for a sweep or a loft. We can't really use it for some of these other things because we need solid geometry first. In this section down here, we have what are called primitives. These are going to be basic shapes that you can create quickly, and these features incorporate the selection of a sketch plane, the creation of geometry. In this case, it'll be a rectangle. For the cylinder, it'll be a circle. And then it'll allow you to create that solid geometry without having to make the sketch first. So as we go down the line, again, there's a lot more here. There are patterns. We can thicken surfaces. We can create meshes, and we can create uh, 3D PCB geometry. Again, we're not quite there yet, but don't worry, we'll be able to explore a lot of this stuff. But for right now, we want to take what we've done and we want to create an extrude. As soon as we select extrude, if we don't have anything selected on the screen, if it looks like this, you simply select the profile or profiles that you want to extrude. In our case, I'm going to select all three. 
We have on-screen manipulators. These allow us to manually drag the geometry to begin to create a solid body. I'm going to take this up 25 millimeters, but here's an important note in Fusion 360. If you hit the Enter key when you're in a dialog and you're creating something, it's going to OK the operation. Before I do that, I want to point out a few things. There's another manipulator here that allows us to change the taper angle or the draft on the side of the part. We also have options to start from the profile plane, which in this case is top, but we can also start from an offset value or another object. We can go a distance, we can go to another object, we can go through all of another solid body if we're using this to remove geometry, and we can also change the operation type. In this case, because we have no other geometry, what we're looking at is creating a new body. We could also create what's called a new component but again, we're not quite there yet, so don't even worry about what a component is. If we had other geometry, we could join, we could remove from it, or we could keep the intersection or the overlap. Again, we're focusing on new body. And from here, again, if you're in a dialog box, you hit enter, it's going to OK that. Not a big deal here because we can always go back and edit that feature. But in other cases, like if we were working in a form, we wouldn't necessarily have that option. And again, we'll get there later. Don't worry too much about it. But just know that hitting the Enter key in a dimension dialog box when you're creating an extrude or revolve or whatever will OK that entire dialog. So make sure that you hit the dimension that you want. Make sure that if you want to apply more dimensions, then you use the interface to do that. From here, after we use that sketch, it's automatically hidden. So we want to make sure that we bring it back. I'm going to say extrude and notice that it's automatically trying to select the face and not the sketch because it's below it. Now if you're using the fusion style of 3D orbit you can hold down the shift key, hold down the middle mouse wheel and then you can rotate your model around. Again if not you can use this option to orbit which will allow you to just use your left mouse button and notice that there is a circle on the screen. The cursor changes outside of there. You'll be able to rotate about different axes when you're outside in certain positions. And you can also double click and change the pivot point. If I double click over here, it's going to move that to the center of that circle. I'm not going to worry too much about that orbit. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to bring this back to the center. And I'm going to talk about another way to select through other geometry. We can use the selection drop down, change the filter, we can allow it to select through, we can change the priority to select faces or sketch entities, and we can use these tools to help grab what we want. There is another quick way that I like to use. If you hover over the selection that you want, in this case in between these two circles, hold down the left mouse button, it's going to bring up this little dialog box that allows us to navigate through the things that our cursor is over. The top face, the sketch profile, or the bottom face. In this case, we want to left click on the profile, and now we see the manipulators that we want to create on extrude. Something that Fusion 360 does automatically is if I drag this down, it's going to automatically try to join these together. If I drag it up, it's going to automatically try to cut. It knows that we're dealing with another solid body, and if I'm dragging this through, it thinks what I really want to do is remove material. If I'm going the other direction, it thinks I want to join it. At any point in time, I can manually change that option. In this case, I want to join these two together. I'm just simply starting from a sketch on the bottom. So in this case, we're going to bring this up 60 millimeters. We're going to join it, and we're going to say OK. Once we do that, we will need to go back and manually hide that sketch. And then I'm going to come over to my view cube area and left click on this house. And this is going to be our home view. We can also use the view cube to rotate my view, you can select the corner of any of these. You can see that it's modifying the view. And then we can always use the home view at any time. If the part is way off in space, we can also use the zoom option to zoom in and out or fit to screen to bring it back. And I want to point out one more thing while we're here. My camera option is set to perspective with ortho faces. This is going to allow it to have perspective as it's rotating around. But if I go to one of these views like front, it's going to make it orthographic. 
So this means I have no perspective on it here. If we change our camera settings to perspective, you'll notice that now you can see the front and the back are different in relation to the way that we're viewing it. Perspective with ortho faces is a good way to get a realistic view of your parts, but when you're working with them in case of like sketching, you want to have that orthographic view just to make sure that you know exactly where your sketch elements are. At this point, we're going to take a look at modifications. So we've created geometry from our sketch. The modify dropdown has things that we can do. Press pull is a direct editing tool. We're not going to talk about it just yet. And we've got other things down here like shell, draft, scale. Again, these are things that we'll get to as they become applicable. What we want to focus on is the fillet feature, which is also F on the keyboard. We'll select fillet. We can select corners. And notice in Fusion 360, you can actually select these corners through solid geometry, making the selection process nice and easy. Once we have all of them selected, we can use the manipulator on the screen to change that fillet radius. You'll notice if I go too far, I get an error. But up until that point, I can go to pretty much any dimension. If you want to add or remove edges, you can hold down the Control key, and that'll allow you to go back and deselect edges. But once you apply a dimension, you will have to use that control key to add or remove edges to your selection. For example, if I want to add a fillet to this edge as well, I simply need to hold down the control key, select or deselect it, and then I'm okay. I'm going to make the corner radius 25 millimeters, and then I'm going to say okay. So that is a modify or a modification of solid geometry. We didn't create new geometry, even though technically we added faces to the outside of the part but we modify the geometry we already had. If we take a look at the other modifications, we have things like the ability to split solid bodies. We can split faces, divide them up into multiple pieces. We can replace faces if we have a surface or a plane. And again, we can use things like press pull, which is a direct editing tool. Before we save this and move on, I wanna talk about one really powerful feature of Fusion 360. The direct editing tools that allow us to change the location or dimension of geometry, especially if we don't have a timeline, but also the features that allow us to do things like completely remove geometry. Now, I did that quickly because I really just wanted to show you how quick and powerful it is, but the way that we can do this is select geometry, go to modify and use delete, or use delete on the keyboard, and what Fusion does is it tries to patch that geometry. So it removes that face and extends all the surrounding faces out. When this is done in the solid workspace or the design workspace with the solid tab, it's going to keep the solid body. I used Control Z for undo. You can also use the arrow up here. If we do this with surfaces and we try the same thing and I delete it, what we're doing is we're converting this to a surface body. It simply removes that face. So the tools just like all of the selections in the right-click menu are contextual, meaning that where you are can matter exactly how it's applied. So the delete key, for example, it works in the solid environment by removing faces and patching. In the surface environment, it simply just gets rid of that face. So keep that in mind that the tools, just like some of the right-click options, are going to be contextual, meaning that they behave differently depending on where exactly you are in Fusion 360. To finish this off, let's go back to the home view. Let's save the design. And I'm going to change the version description to solid created. Again, these are just notes. So that way, if you're looking at different versions, you can understand exactly what was done at that point in time. Solid created is the note. No biggie. We know exactly what it is. So at this point in time, we've covered the basic user interface. We've covered sketching at least at the basic level. We know about dimensions and constraints. We know about making a fully defined sketch. And we've talked about making a basic feature from those sketches. There's a lot more to cover. We're gonna talk about forms next, and then we're gonna get into assemblies. But right now, just make sure this design is saved before you move on to the next lesson.